drawers. Hey, I'm changing. They're easily the most useful feature you can add to any piece of furniture, but for some people, they seem a little challenging. Hi, my name is Eric Spensley, and today I'm going to show you how I build drawer boxes for all my projects that will work with any kind of drawer slide hardware on Spensley Design Co. Real quick before we get to making the drawers themselves, let's talk about hardware. For the most part, there are two main types of slides, side mounted slides and undermount slides. With side mounted slides, the construction of the drawer box is pretty much irrelevant as long as they fit between the two slides. But with undermount slides, you need a recessed lip to hold the slide as well as this weird cutout thing on the back. Yeah, good luck deciphering that instruction manual. So instead of having to adapt the drawer that you're building to the hardware that you're using, today I'm gonna to show you a drawer style that works with both types flawlessly. So let's jump into it. I like to build my drawer boxes out of half inch thick plywood. And I'm not gonna talk about how to size your drawer in this video, but know that if you download any of the plans for the projects that I have, they include detailed cut lists to make sure that all of your drawers fit perfectly. So try to make everything as easy as possible to follow, let's quickly jump into SketchUp to get an overview of the construction of the drawer. Each drawer consists of five main parts. The front of the drawer, the back of the drawer, the two sides, and then the bottom panel. The front and back panels are gonna be cut to the same length. However, their heights are slightly different. The two side pieces are exact copies of one another, and the bottom panel is just a sheet of plywood. It's nothing special. The bottom panel needs to be recessed one half inch from the bottom and dados will be cut in the front and sides to hold that panel in place. Now all of this talk might make it seem kind of complicated, but let's just start cutting pieces and I think that'll help you better visualize things. Once all the pieces are cut, I'll lower my blade to about one quarter of an inch and start cutting out a dado to hold the bottom panel in place. Now since those dados aren't quite big enough, I'll tap my fence over just a hair and take another pass. The scrap piece won't fit in quite yet, so one more pass should do it. The way that I like to construct my drawer leaves the back panel slightly shorter so that I can easily slide the bottom panel in place. So before I do anything to my fence, I'll raise the blade and cut those back panels since it's already at the perfect spot. See what I mean? Absolutely perfect. To bring the drawers together, I like to use pocket holes in the front and back since you will never see them. And this new 720 Pro pocket hole jig from Craig makes that process extremely easy. After the pocket holes are drilled into the front and back pieces, I'll clamp everything together and fire in the screws to hold the sides to the front. And then I can clamp the back side on with that piece perfectly aligned with the dado. With the main construction of the drawers finished, I'll cut down a few pieces of plywood that will fit perfectly inside the bottom. And if these were larger drawers, I'd probably use half inch thick plywood, but these drawers are really small, so quarter inch is totally fine. Ooh, all right. So I've got all of the bottoms cut that are gonna make these drawers. And the advantage to doing the drawer construction this way is say that this drawer is, you know, slightly out of square. When I get through and insert this panel down into the drawer, because this panel is square, as soon, oh, stand by. <sighs> all right, here we go. <laughs> As soon as that panel's in there, it's gonna pull the drawer to be perfectly square, and it's a nice tight fit, so it's not gonna be rattling all over the place. So. And to prevent the bottom from moving around, I'll just fire in a couple screws from the bottom and you'll never see them. Well, you're probably thinking, what if my drawer is a different size? This building process works the exact same regardless of the size of the drawer. And to show you an example of that, let's flash to building a different size drawer. So again, to start out, you'll cut all of your pieces to the required size, and if you build any of my projects, those dimensions will be provided in the cut list. Then, cut that dado to fit in the thickness of the bottom panel. 
One thing to keep in mind is that you need to make sure that you're adjusting your pocket hole jig to the correct thickness of material that you're using. I'm using half inch thick ply, so I set the stop collar to one half and the 720 Pro jig does all the rest of the adjustments for me so I get perfect pocket holes every time. Now, pocket holes do have a slight tendency to shift while driving screws, so make sure that you clamp everything down tight. And just like that, you've got another drawer box that came together perfectly and you can repeat until you have the number of drawers that you need. With a drawer construction like this, ensuring that your bottom panel is perfectly square is absolutely critical. That's why I like to use this precision miter gauge from Craig that locks into a perfect 90 each and every time. Plus, this flip stop makes sure that I can easily repeat cuts without having to measure. With the bottom panel cut, I can insert it into the dados and with a few taps, get the panel to fit perfectly. Again, to hold the panel in securely, I'll pre-drill and countersink some holes before driving some screws in. Now, if you are building larger drawers that are gonna be holding a lot more weight, consider beefing up that bottom to half inch thick ply. And if we take a trip down memory lane where I had long hair in this little itty bitty table saw, you can see that the exact same steps were followed back then too. The only difference is that I made the dado larger to hold in that thicker bottom panel. All the other steps were exactly the same. This is truly the drawer construction method that I've been using for over two years. And when Craig reached out asking to partner on a video to support the channel, it was a perfect fit. Craig makes high quality tools at a very affordable price that I use every day in my garage. Things like their 720 Pro pocket hole jig, precision miter gauge, and all the other blue tools you see in my shop are items that I would truly use even if I had no affiliation with them. Even from the early days, I've used Craig products like their older R3 pocket hole jig. And the very first Craig product that I ever bought was the rip cut guide for my circular saw. And that's what I used to cut down plywood in the parking lot of my home center because for almost three years, the saw has still been broken. So I have to do it myself. So again, I wanted to thank Craig for supporting the channel and getting me one step closer to being able to quit my day job and take this channel full time. To install the drawers, I'll first start by laying down a few spacer pieces in the cabinet, disassembling the slides, and then placing the outer part of the slide onto that spacer and using a scrap piece of wood to make sure the slide was inset far enough. After firing a few screws to hold it in place, I can slide the inner part of the slide in and get a glimpse of that sweet soft close action. The drawers themselves are also pretty easy to install. Just lay some scrap pieces down to lift up the drawer, then carefully slide the drawer out and attach it with screws, slowly working your way all the way back. Then just remove those spacer pieces and you're all set. So in the event that you decide to make drawers using some undermount slides, this style of drawer works perfectly. You don't have to make any notches on the back of the drawer. All you have to do is attach these clips to the bottom side of the drawer, then attach your slides to your piece. With that installed, just slide the drawer on top of the slides and everything clips into place perfectly. Now, before I jump into showing you how to install the drawer fronts and handles, leave a comment down below that says lettuce. I read every comment that comes through. So when you write lettuce, it lets me know that you actually watched the video. So if you have any questions or just want to support what I'm doing here, write lettuce down below and I promise I'll get back to you. So for those drawer fronts, I picked up these cheap handles and I want to mount them right here. Sure, I could measure out the spacing, but I'm gonna use this cabinet hardware jig that had preset markings for different size drawer pulls. Just clamp it on, drill through the guides, and you're all set. To get the drawer fronts on perfectly, I cut some eighth inch spacers to use on all sides of the drawer front, and then I can clamp everything together. From the back side, I can countersink some screws to hold the drawer front in place and remove those clamps. Back on the front, I'll drill out the hole so that it goes all the way into the drawer itself and then countersink a spot for the handle hardware. Tighten everything by hand and you're all set. Hopefully this helped dispel some of the confusion around making drawer boxes and gave you the confidence to start building them for yourself.